In this lesson for Bobcad Cam, we're going to cover the machine configuration. One of the first steps in setting up the software for machining is to define your machine and posting parameters. This is really necessary to create NC, a proper NC program. The machine configuration is for mill, laser, plasma, water, jet, and lathe. A machine configuration for these machines is accomplished using the current settings dialog box, but you can also define as many machines as needed, one for each of the machines you might have in your shop. Uh, if, if you define more than one machine, you can select a different machine for every file you have open, and we're going to go through and show you how to do all that as well. So to access these, you're going to go to CAM defaults and right click, and then we're going to click on current settings. Now inside of here, this is the default settings of machines. You can see we can have a machine make, anything from lathe, laser mill, plasma water jet, multi-axis mills, and so forth. The type of milling it is, so you can see if I was to switch this to a lathe, it switches to lathe, milling, plasma, and so forth. And then I can add new ones. I can delete ones I don't want in my system. I can also modify uh, the names of them to suit me if I just want to modify an existing machine. And you can also set a default. So whatever it's on when you hit the Save as Default button will be the default for any new jobs you do in your software. So let's start by adding a machine. We're just going to go through and just uh, add a basic machine in here. We're going to say it's just a three-axis mill. I'm going to hit Add. My machine is going to be the uh, new underscore bobcad underscore mill. You don't want to have any spaces in this name. As you can see up here, in this one we're using underscores in here as well. Spaces in this will cause, uh, cause the machine not to be able to be chosen again and working correctly. So either use underscores or just make a one run out name. The type of machine it is, it can be a lathe, water jet, plasma, laser, or milling. And the number of axes is for this particular type of machine. So we're just going to choose the three axis template. Now these are predefined templates. You notice down at the bottom for milling we also have a user defined. Uh, the predefined templates are already set up for your standard type machines. Three axis really is not too important, but when you get into four or five uh, head heads and so forth, the templates become very important because it's how are the axis is aligned to the normal so when you get into a four-axis rotary, is that rotary aligned to the X? Is it aligned to the Y? Is it aligned to Z? Your machine configuration needs to uh, show which way that is lined up so when the code is posted, it actually looks at that file and knows what how to output the codes and everything and the movements. So we're just going to do three axes for now. And you can see here's our name. Number of axes is three milling. We can set the maximum number of tools, the maximum rapid feed rate maybe, Maximum spindle speed maybe is only 10,000, and maybe my maximum cutting feed rate is 250. Now the machine definition, this really only needs to be set up for milling machines. Plasma, laser, water, jet, and lathe do not set this up. It's not needed at this time. Well, plasma, laser, water, jet, you can if you have a multi-axis one of those. But two-axis lathe don't need to come in here at all. Um, it's not actually even used for that point yet, just mainly the machine name and posting parameters. But for the mills, for example, you can see this is the configuration of the machine. So here's the name, which is considered the base of the machine. What's attached to the base is the y-axis. The x-axis sits on top of the y, and the workpiece sits on top of the x. Off separately to the base is the z, and then you have your collision checking down here. So what this is saying is if I move the x, just the x moves. If I move the y, the x and the y move. And if I move the Z, just the Z moves. So you need to configure your machine how it would be laid out. And then maybe on the X, I might have the rotation of A and so forth. And you can right-click on these and add different translation axes, rotary axes, uh, dynamic elements of workpiece sets and tool sets, which are what are here. So on the Z is the tool holder, flute, shaft, arbor, all that stuff. And on the X is the workpiece, toolpath, stock, and fixture. Now, like if I click on the Y, over here on the right, you have some parameters. You have the ID, which is the axis name. You don't want to change that. Just leave it the X, Y, Z, or whatever it is. The direction. So this is saying the one, it's like one's on, zero's off uh, is an easy way to think about it. And this is, has the one on the Y axis. So the Y axis is where the movement's at. Then you also have the option of a positive or negative one. Uh, the way this works is if the tool is actually moving back and forth on that axis, it's a positive one. If the tool is stationary and the table 
is moving back and forth on that axis, it's a minus one. So on a standard three axis vertical milling machine, the tool is usually stationary and the table moves back and forth on the y axis, so that's why we have a minus one here. Now the limits, these are your limits in travel from like the center of the table, positive and negative or wherever your virtual machine zero would be. So you can see this is just wide open right now, 400 inches each way. And if you're not using uh, the full machine simulations and things like that, a lot of this is really not needed. Just set up the set up the travels wide open and use the default templates that are in there. When you get into the multi-axis, like four and five, uh, five axis milling, and the full machine configurations is when you want to really get in and tighten up these travels and make everything uh, match up to your machine. So that way, when you do your collision checks of components off of those STL files, everything will warn you if something's going to hit. Initial value is just a value between the minimum and maximum. In this case, zero is between minus 400 and 400. It can be any number you pick, as long as it's between them. So then the same thing for the X. You can see this is a minus one on the X, so the X is moving, not the tool. And then my travels. The Z, now notice the tool is traveling up and down the Z. Uh, itself is moving, so that's a positive one. And then your travel distance is here. Now the, the CC or cutter collision checking, what this is, is it actually shows whatever geometries you have here. You have to have a geometry in the tree for to be able to use for collision checking. So you can see the only geometries that come by default are the fixture, initial stock, and tool path. And you can set anything in group one if it collides with group two in the simulation. Uh, it will stop and let you know. So as you start adding geometries to this, if you have the full machine simulation part of the software, um, they will be available here to be picked and chosen and moved back and forth. The next thing down is the posting. So this is where we'll set what post processor is going to be called when I choose this machine. So let's say, for instance, I'm going to use the uh, just the Fanuc OM. So every time I pick that machine, the Fanuc OM post will get loaded into my cam tree. The default file uh, NC path, this is just a temporary storage place. I recommend leaving this set to the default uh, C drive, uh, Bobcat Queen data, the version of the software, NCM mill. It just needs a read writable drive to store a temporary file. When you save it, like any other Windows save box, it will ask you where you want to save the NC file. This is what uh, NC file extension this machine requires. So it might be maybe a TXT extension or a, a TAP. Just make this whatever you need so that way when you go to save it, the correct file extension will come up by default. Program number, uh, if you're using line numbers, the first number and sequence number. So if you want these to maybe be 10 and 10, you can put that in here. And these can come in and be changed and reposted at any time. Subprograms, comments are used or not. And then you also have for your multi-axis machines, like four and five axis mills, the ability to set up some standards for your multi-axis machines in here like limits on the first and secondary rotations, uh, retract for rewind, if your indexer can only go like 999 degrees before it has to retract and rewind, the heights for that, uh, first, second solution, um, how they rotate if you want to go the opposite way on like a trunnion instead of towards the back of the machine or the front. So you have some basic settings in here for that. And if I press OK on that, then I can come back into my current settings and you can see there's my new machine. Now, if I want this to be the default, like I said, just choose it and use that save as default button. So once I've done that, if I close this file down, bring in a new file, go to my cam defaults, current settings, you'll see that'll be my default machine. And then down here in my milling job, you have another current settings. Notice I can't add or make them here, but I can choose what machine I want to use for this one. So if I have one of these for every machine in my shop and I decide, okay, I'm programming for a different machine or I'm posting out to a different machine now, I can choose that one and then just post my code and it will be all converted to that machine, the post processor, the, the default settings, and so forth. So machine configuration is very important. Again, cam, cam defaults, right-click, current settings, choose the machine you might want to modify or name, like maybe my... Uh, lathe one here I want to modify this and I want it to be instead of BC two axis lathe I want it to be a Haas two axis lathe so it's a lathe type so I just change the name I can change a few defaults here machine definition is not hooked up so you do not need to change anything here best just to leave that alone for lathe at this time then I can come down and set which post is chosen for this 
and just like the rest of the information we saw for the other one. Lathe toolpath output, theoretical pointer arc cutting, um, and it also has multi-axis posting is here, but again, this will be for your multi-axis mill, so you can skip over this page as well. So for the lathe, all you have to do is give it a name, set a few defaults here, skip the machine definition, set your post processor, file extensions, and lathe tool put out path types, and then OK it, and you're done. So that way, if I was to come in and do a new job for turning, you can see there's my machine, and I would have all my different machines there as well. That is one last thing I want to bring up here. If I go to a new file, whether on opening up the new file or after I have a file open, going to the modules menu and new job, when you pick that job type right off the start, you can choose your machine then. You don't have to. You can wait till any time to choose it before you post code or simulate, but I might want to choose that machine now. And now I'll know I have that machine chosen and the post processor correctly to go in and start my job. Anytime you have any questions on this, you can always refer to your help system on machine configurations. Um, how to create a machine is inside of here. It goes over all the stuff we just talked about. As you can see, very detailed as well. Even if you get into the full machine, it shows you how to set up the different components and everything, the geometries, and so forth. And let me go back to the top. Uh, machine configuration. And I also have the understanding the machine definition. You know, again, all the different things inside of here as well. Adding the new machine, building machines. All this information is contained inside of here. There's also information on our, on our website under the support uh, tab menu. This concludes this lesson.